Welcome to part seven of our paid search audit series. If you want to find any of the previous videos, you can follow this link right here. Today, we're going to talk about long-term performance trends. Now, typically when somebody comes to us with an audit, they have a specific pain point of why they're coming to us and why they're coming to us now. Almost always, it's not something that just overnight, everything crashed and doesn't make any sense. It seems like what normally happens is over the past few weeks, months, maybe even years, things have been in a slow decline and the client really just wants to get things back to where they were if possible. And if they can be better than that, great. So what we end up needing to do with that is kind of understand where things are now. So understanding what the current settings are, but we also have to look back over a lot of different time frames to understand what happened and how we got here. So in this video, we're going to walk through some examples of how we look back at different time frames for a long term performance so we can understand how we got in the scenario we're in today. For this video, we're going to start off in an account that actually was an audit project for us earlier this year. So this will be kind of hands on exactly what we look at when we look at an account. But as I mentioned, we actually did audit this account. So I already kind of know what I'm looking for, but I'll walk you guys through and show you how we discovered things going on in this account and talk about some of the suggestions that we made in it. So the first thing is that over the course of the year from effectively January into the end of August, this account saw a decrease in the return on ad spend that it was seeing from its campaigns. As I mentioned in the intro, this is kind of a slow creep that happened over the course of the year where things became less and less profitable. And that's the reason why this company came to us to audit the account. So to start off, I'm on the campaigns tab. I'm looking at all enabled and paused campaigns for that entire time frame because we want to get an idea of what happened. I've got in my chart here just cost and conversion value divided by cost or the ROAS in the platform. And I don't necessarily mind where the cost is. It just tells me that they've been investing pretty consistently over the course of the year. But the problem is coming in with this red line. The ROAS overall starts off at two in January, a little less than two in February. And then as the year goes on, it goes down to 172, pops back up a little bit to 18, then 172 again, 142, 135. And then in August, it's all the way down to 1.14 or 114% ROAS, which is just barely turning a profit in these campaigns. Now, overall, that's a little less than a 50% decrease in the ROAS for the account. So definitely makes sense why they came to us. Now, as I've probably said multiple times during this audit series, there's no real right or wrong way to do this. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the number of campaigns we have active. If we scroll down here, you can see that there was, you know, 152 campaigns in the entire account. I want to filter just to see how many of them had impressions during this time frame. Set that to greater than zero. Click apply. Now I can see all of the campaigns that were running during this time frame. Quite a number of them are now paused, which might be telling of some of the things that were going on, but there's still some that are active and definitely the ones with the highest investment. You can see I have this sorted by cost. Those three are still active. So the highest spending during this time frame are still active in the account today. So now the first thing that I'm going to do is try and understand where this decrease is coming. Is it coming from one campaign, all of them? Which parts of the account are seeing the decrease in ROAS? So to do that, I'm just going to go to segment, look at the time, segment by month, since we can see a pretty clear diminishing row as month over month. So now just scroll this over, start to look at these different campaigns. So this first campaign has the highest investment in the account, and it starts off pretty high at 238, then a little bit lower. But if you see over the course of the year, there are definitely some spots where it dips below two. August, it definitely didn't help anything out. But this to me looks like natural fluctuation in a campaign. This doesn't look like anything that is a precipitous fall off. It bounces back and forth pretty evenly. This next one has 117 total. And here we can see that we're well above 100% in ROAS right up until we hit May and then everything kind of bottoms out. So this is definitely a campaign we want to take a look at. But I want to make sure I have an understanding of all of the campaigns before I start diving in too much. This next campaign is the third highest spender for the year. And it too starts off kind of okay. And then it's got some really low months down here. July was pretty terrible, but August is coming back up. So maybe this is something that I would look into a little further. For this video, I probably won't just because we've got some other things to look at. But here I'd probably take a look and see why this month dipped and what's coming back. 
it does seem to be rebounding a little bit. This might be something to take a look at. Now we're in some of the campaigns that are paused. And you can see here starting in March through June, this campaign was running, had a decent investment, but the ROAS on it is never super strong, which is probably contributing to why starting in kind of halfway through this time period, ROAS went down. This campaign is new, it's additional spend, and the ROAS is lower. Same sort of thing here. Now we've got an additional 2,000, 15,000, and 4,000 that didn't generate any conversion value. So that's really gonna pull down June, July, and August stats. So this is a campaign I'll probably take a look at to try and understand what they were going for. Obviously, if you spend $20,000, you really wanted this to work, but for whatever reason, it didn't. So we'll probably come back to this one. This next one down here is interesting. Started off, had two months, performance was almost 300%, 200%, and then it got turned off. Why? This looks to be doing really well. This is something we might wanna revisit. There are a few other campaigns that are like that. This one is currently active again. You can see that it had 163, 200%, 154%. You can see here, this is a bidding test against one of the campaigns that is still active up at the top. This is another campaign that had lots of spend associated with it starting in March and didn't have any conversion value, even though it does have conversion actions in here. So at this point, I have a handful of things that I need to investigate. Let's start to go through these kind of in reverse order and work our way back up to the top of this page. I'm gonna start with the campaign that we're on right now. Has lots of conversions, no conversion value associated with it. Just as a quick glance, I'm gonna change my segment to conversion action because something is different with the conversions coming from this campaign. And now we can see that the conversion actions for these campaigns are different. This one is bundle purchase. This has a brand name and then purchase after it. And each one of these has conversion value associated. Whereas this one seems to be a partner conversion, which we've got to blur out the name, apologies for that. And then a B2B contact us lead, which again, no value associated with it. So my takeaway here for the client is what are the values associated with these leads? Just because something isn't an immediate e-commerce purchase doesn't mean that it doesn't have value associated with it. You've probably heard a lot about assigning different values to leads, marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads, opportunities, and customers through your lead generation process. And this is a key scenario where I would suggest trying to utilize that for this account because obviously they wanna maximize conversion value so if you wanna continue doing that, you can assign a value to these different leads to try and optimize for better quality leads. But the other thing is that they do at least have the right bidding strategy. They have maximized conversions as opposed to maximized conversion value or target ROAS like the other campaign does. So it's not hindering the campaign performance to not have any conversion value here, but it does make the entire account look worse. So if you don't wanna apply values to the campaigns, the other option is to simply not include this campaign in your conversion value metric calculations. Now this is over the course of six months. There was about $13,000 in spend, little over $2,000 a month for an account that has spent $1 million during that time frame. It's kind of a drop in the bucket, so it's probably not hindering your ROAS performance too much, but this is definitely an area where we would suggest either adjusting the conversion values for your goals or adjusting the way that you calculate ROAS for the account so as not to include this in those calculations, since obviously it's not optimizing for value. Okay, so that's the first scenario that we would wanna call out and make sure that we're pointing out an opportunity to extend the performance of the account. So the next campaign I wanna look at is gonna be this bid strategy test, because overall, it's got some really good keyword performance here. We see 373, 163, 416. So what I really wanna look at is to make sure that the bidding test that they rolled out here was rolled out to the campaign. So I'm gonna scroll over and see that they were using target ROAS at 151%. And I could go to the experiments tab and find the experiment in there, but for some reason, it's not showing up in there. It never did. And I don't really have a good explanation for why it's not. So you'll just have to bear with me on that one. But what I wanna do is navigate to the live campaign of this version and see what bidding strategy they're using. That's gonna be the one all the way up here at the top. And luckily they're using target row as 151% target. So based on the performance that they saw with that bidding experiment, whatever they compared it to, they did roll it out to this campaign and it's still seeing pretty good performance with it. So overall, that's one thing I wanna check is just to make sure that they're leveraging what's working well and it is rolled out to the active campaign. Now let's scroll back down to one of the other campaigns I pointed out just a minute ago, and that's gonna be this one. 
I'm still all the way over to the right. So we're going to see that the bid strategy is target ROAS at 55%, which is interesting considering that the campaign was active for just two months and the ROAS was 300 and 200% respectively. It was then paused at the end of February and into March, but it's not really clear to me why. So I'm going to take a look here going into the campaign itself. Now you can see that we've got different ad groups. The main one is paused. Second one is still active. Performance on this main one was 220%, 435 down below. We had a third ad group that did something but didn't really generate much. So here I'm going to take a look and try to figure out what's going on and why this was paused because performance looks good. So rather than going into a specific ad group, I'm actually just going to look at all of the keywords in this campaign and try to get an understanding for what's going on here. You can see this keyword was removed, but performance looks pretty good. This next one was not removed and performance looks great, always has. It's an exact match term. We have to blur it out because it's effectively a brand term. I'm going to come in here and look at all of the keywords for the campaign. And now we can see we have a handful of different keywords in here. The top one and this third and fourth one down were removed, even though performance looks great for this keyword. The second keyword is kind of contributing and this top one looks really good at 214%. All of these are broad match, so maybe they were generating weird leads, but again, these are conversions that have value associated with them. So I'm just going to check here, go over, check the box next to these. Before we ever suggest turning keywords back on, even if there's a positive row as associated, we always check to see what the search terms are just in case they're bad or need to be someplace else. I'm sorry we can't show you the search terms or keyword column, but up here at the top, a lot of these keywords have decent conversion values. And this first term is non-brand. It matches to the keyword exactly. The second one might make sense to me as to why it's no longer in here. This is actually a brand search term, so it probably got mapped to a different campaign. I would go check that, make sure that's actually what happened. And I would also make sure that this keyword got added as a negative keyword for this campaign because this keyword itself, even though it's blurred out, is non-brand. But the problem is that the search term is just the brand name. So Google has figured out that there's an association between the non-brand term and the brand name, and it's serving that ad. But that doesn't mean that this non-brand keyword is bad, it just means that we need to map the branded terms into a brand campaign. Now currently I've only got three of the conversions up here, even though there were 18 total. So let's filter here. If I look at the rest of these, all of these other keywords look pretty good. All the keywords are solid. All the search terms are solid. There's no issue with this. And the value looks pretty good for the vast majority of these. So at this point, I would probably take just a quick sweep to make sure that everything is compliant across the campaign, ad copy, landing pages, all that. And I would suggest turning this campaign back on. Obviously it was paused. You can see here that since we did review this account, this campaign actually is enabled again, but this is something that we found thought that was a little fishy, seemed like they weren't taking advantage of something that was performing well, and there's no reason not to. So that's this campaign here. As we mentioned, this campaign is now active again. So they took our advice. Hopefully it's performing well. This is one of those campaigns that I called out that they spent $20,000, didn't convert for anything, no conversions whatsoever, whether it was the B2B action with no value or the main conversion actions that did have value associated. So for this campaign, I'm going to take a look and see if anything stands out. So let's go ahead and pop in here real quick. There's only one ad group in this campaign. If I come in here and click on this, we can see that they focused on exact match keywords. They're relatively long tail. They do make sense for the account that we're looking at and they're all non-brand. So these should be pretty specific. Doesn't totally make sense to me why these didn't work. So I'm going to go over here and check the ads real quick. I know we have to blur all this out so you can't see it, but Effectively, there were three ads. They served with some relative rotation. Click through rate looks pretty good, looks normal, nothing fishy here. And all of the ads look just fine. I would then go check the landing pages. I'd look to see where we sent people. Looks like we've got this one main page here. Now at this point, I can't show you what I would do next because we would have to blur out the entire page. But basically, I would click on this page, open it in a new window, review the page, make sure everything looks fine. There's a clear call to action. There's easy next steps, all this stuff. Just make sure that it follows basic conversion rate optimization best practices and see what's going on. As a quick note, we did do that. Everything on this page looks just fine. It's in line with the rest of the website, so nothing stands out there. So we're going to say it's probably not the landing page that's causing the issue. So I'm going to go back to the ad group level just because 
There's only one, it's easy to look at. Next thing I'm gonna take a look at is to segment. And a lot of times when we see traffic that just doesn't work well, there's a few different reasons. So first let's look at the device, okay? This is a big purchase item. So the fact that most of it is coming from computers is normal. Next thing I wanna look at is search partners. Overall, this is just Google search. All this seems to be just fine. Doesn't seem to be any issues with it. Let's take a look at maybe the search terms. Again, this looks great. All of these match pretty closely to the terms that we're looking at. There's no issues with any of these terms coming through. So at this point, I would look through a number of other things in the account. I would look at locations. I would look at audiences, anything else. There's no big reason why this campaign is not performing better. Unfortunately, this is a campaign where it just seems that there's a mismatch between what we're advertising and what we're selling. Now, I know I have all of these search terms and keywords blurred, but the biggest thing that we pointed out that we thought would be a problem is that all of this information is meant to sell to beginners. This brand is well known in its industry and it's known for being highly advanced. And it could just be that this is not spelled out as specifically as possible for beginners, or it could be that the price point is too high. If we go back to the campaigns, look at all of the campaigns here, and then segment by conversion action, we'll be able to see that the conversion value associated with these conversions is pretty high. Two conversions is worth $1,800. That means one conversion is worth $900. Same thing here, 20 conversions is just a little shy of $16,000. So on average, these conversions are worth about 800 bucks. This is a big purchase and for a beginner, that's probably a mismatch. They likely don't wanna spend $800 when they're just getting started. So at that point, rather than suggesting anything different with the account, we're actually gonna suggest that the call to action is different make it something that is lighter, either free or close to free to get people into their longer term sales funnel. Because if you're starting off with the beginner level, you'll probably eventually want some of these advanced options that we have in the campaigns here too. Now, just a quick behind the scenes note, Google crashed on me in between this and this last campaign. So my columns are reset, but that's all it was. We just reloaded. Now we're gonna go back to the last campaign that I wanna take a look at. And that's gonna be this campaign here. You remember this one started off with mediocre performance and then just really petered off as the year went on. So at this point, we wanna figure out why that happened because this campaign is still active, still in place. It is using a target ROAS bid strategy. And if I add the column for it, then we'll be able to see that the target ROAS is gonna be 100%. Also moved some of these around so we could see that right now or over the course of the year, the conversion value has actually been pretty close to what the target ROAS is now. So. Let's figure out why it dipped below that starting in May of 2024. If we come in here, I'm gonna do the same thing we did previously. Look at each of the ad groups, at 100%, 400, but I wanna see how they're trending over the course of the year, still by month. If we scroll down here, this top ad set definitely had higher performance in April, petered off in May. The second one is an exact match, had really high performance in March, but then it's been relatively consistent up until August when volume was quite a bit lower on it. So overall, I would say it's a bigger problem with this top ad group here. The third one down the line started off low, kind of increased and then fell off a cliff going into June, July and August. So that's interesting. Same sort of thing here, June and July, big goose egg for that ad group. So it seems like except for the one exact match ad group, it's happening across the entire campaign, which then to me says there's something going on and exact match is just probably immune to it. So we'd end up doing the same thing here that we did in the previous review. I would look at the keywords, I would look at the ad copy, I would look at the search terms associated with this campaign to see if anything changed over that time period. Just because this video is getting long, I'm gonna tell you that nothing changed with those. Everything else was about the same, but one of the things that we noticed when we were going through all of the different things is what I mentioned earlier. If we come over here to keywords and content, go to locations, we're going to also segment these by month. If we scroll down a bit, we can see we have the UK, Germany, France, but then here's where we start to see some things that called out to us later on. Spain was up here, it did generate conversions and it got paused in April. Italy got paused once we got into June, which again, it did have some conversions, especially in February. And then as we keep scrolling down, now we can see that Poland had some really good performance and got paused in April, even though performance was what, 
almost 13%, 600%, and the cost was not very high. Netherlands was in a similar position. It had consistently over 100% ROAS. April was a little bit of a struggle, but then it got paused and taken away. Now, while these individual locations might not have super high ROAS for each of them associated with it, we take this away, Poland looks very strong, but it got removed. Now, Netherlands, Italy, and Spain, not top performers, but here's the biggest issue with it. If I narrow this down to when most of these got paused, end of April. Now we're looking at a four month period and total, there were 100 conversions associated with this campaign. That averages out to being about 25 conversions per month. Now, although Google says it does not have a conversion minimum when it comes to bidding, having anywhere less than one conversion per day or 30 conversions in 30 days makes it really hard for it to optimize and optimize well. So our theory was, and still holds, that when they removed these locations, Spain, Italy, Poland, and Netherlands, they effectively took out a good chunk of the conversions that were coming through. If we add these up, we're in the low 30s. So out of 100, they took away about 30% of the conversions that were happening in this campaign. And that really hindered Google's bidding algorithm. So our suggestion was to turn these back on, try to get them flowing back through again, and see if we can improve performance. Now I bring that up because if we go back to the campaigns, and we look at the performance now. So let's look at the last 30 days. Even though this is outside of our purview, we have not been auditing this account for a little bit. I still noticed this when I came in to prep for this video. I thought it was worth calling out because it's in line with the suggestion we had around location targeting. Currently, these top three campaigns, each are limited by budget. And although $500 a day, $600 a day, and almost $1,400 a day are healthy budgets for most campaigns, if we scroll over and we see the cost per conversion, this top one is at 1,000, this next one is at 2,300, and this third one is at 1,600. So this bottom campaign, remember, has a budget of $500 a day. So every third day, on average, you'll get a conversion. That does not help you reach that 30 conversions in 30 days. Same thing with this campaign. It's got a $600 budget, $2,400 cost per conversion, so every fourth day it's gonna generate a lead. Now this campaign up at the top does have enough volume to support effectively one lead per day. Cost per conversion is $1,000, budget is around $1,400, so maybe you get five leads in four days, something like that. Great, that meets a minimum, that's probably okay, but these two campaigns down here are really gonna struggle with that machine learning and with the difference of one, two, three conversions making a really big difference conversion value-wise, this is a tough hurdle to get over. So what we suggest instead is to retain your target ROAS bid strategies, maybe come up with a combined portfolio bidding strategy of ROAS, try to hit 150, 125% between these two, because right now they're at 104 and 111. So anything even 125 is gonna be better but try and combine the budgets of these two. Now we have $1,100 per day, and although that still doesn't quite meet the metrics that we're looking for here for $1,600 and $2,400 cost per conversion, it's getting much closer to that one conversion per day. And Google will decide between this second campaign and the third campaign, which keywords should get the budget because they have a higher likelihood to convert. And at this point, if they were to ask us to audit again, this would be a suggestion we'd have. Combine these into a single portfolio bidding strategy, into a single shared budget, maybe even include the third campaign at the top, and let Google optimize across them to see better performance on aggregate, even if individual campaigns fluctuate here and there. So overall, when it comes to auditing the long-term performance of a campaign to understand where we are, there's effectively two high-level questions within subsequent questions down below them. The first is what's trending upward? or what has performed well in the past. Why is it performing well? Is there more that we can do? And are there strategies that aren't being used elsewhere? So in this account, think about that campaign that had 200% month over month for January and February, but is now paused. Why isn't that active? 200% for this account is good. So why aren't we turning that on? And is there something we can learn from that campaign to apply to other campaigns? And then the second big question is what's trending downward? And why is it trending downward? Do we not have enough budget allocated to reach our conversion goals? Are there internal and external forces that are happening on the campaigns? 
Did we remove some locations that were performing really well? Is there a mismatch between your offer or your call to action and the audience you're targeting? Like with the beginner non-brand campaign that we looked at that wasn't converting, probably because the cost per conversion is just too high for a beginner. It's the wrong level of investment. And is there something we can do to correct course, either developing a new call to action, lowering the cost, or do we just need to abandon this altogether? And then is there anything we can use to replace it? The theory behind finding new people who are beginners is good, but do we need to reach into a different net new audience, people who aren't looking specifically for this type of solution, but are still willing to pay that certain amount? Is there something we need to do instead? Overall, auditing the long-term performance of an account is certainly more of an art than a science. But as you can see, we looked at trending performance at the campaign, ad group, keyword, search query, ad copy levels, as well as trying to understand how bidding strategies changed and what the location targeting was for the account. Now, clearly, there are infinite number of scenarios of things that have happened in an account. This is just one example of one account that had a few different things that we could walk through. But hopefully this gives you the confidence to understand how to start at a high level and dig down until you can find what seems to be the cause of performance trending upward or downward and what you need to do about it. If you have any additional questions about this portion of the audit series or anything else when it comes to auditing a paid search account, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.